Hello everyone, this is me Arijit back with a new video and again it's a video on Raspberry Pi. So in this video I'll show you how you can install Home Assistant in Raspberry Pi. So if you don't know what is Home Assistant, it's an open source home automation platform. In this video I'll show you how you can install it in Raspberry Pi and can configure it. And in the next series of videos I will show you a lot of things like uh, connecting ESP home devices with this home assistant, connecting blink devices, normal smart devices and a lot of things with home assistant. So we will start with the very basics. So in this video I will show you how you can install the OS in a memory card then how to start your Pi with an Ethernet cable or wirelessly and then how you can configure the basics and all the things. And from the next video, we will start exploring all the other things with Home Assistant. So now, without wasting any time, let's get started. Okay guys, so let's start with the very basics. So the very first thing is we have to install the OS in the Raspberry Pi. And for that, in the memory card specifically. So for that, we are going to use Raspberry Pi Imager. You can directly download Raspberry Pi Imager from the official site. And this is how it looks like now. So there are mainly two ways of installing Home Assistant in your Raspberry Pi. One way is directly installing the Home Assistant OS in your Raspberry Pi and which is the more traditional way. The second way is installing a Raspberry Pi OS in Raspberry Pi, then installing a Docker or container of Home Assistant in the Raspberry Pi. So both things you can do. But the disadvantage of the second thing is that like uh, installing the Docker or container of uh, container of home assistant is that you cannot use hacks so you cannot use the home assistant community store so basically from home assistant community store you are we generally install a lot of add-ons and important things that we need in home assistant so that's why missing out uh, hacks doesn't work i think so that's why in this video i'm going to uh, install the os uh, the home assistant OS directly in raspberry pi but if you want to know like uh, how to install the docker or container of home assistant in pi let me know in the comment section. I'll make a video on that too. So now uh, we have to choose the OS here. So for that, we have to go to this uh, other specific purpose OS here, home assistant and home automation and from their home assistant, just click on it. And it is going to show you all the versions. So for Pi 5, Pi 4, Pi 3, I'm going to use, I'm using Pi 5, so I'm going to use Pi 5, but you can also use 4 or 3, no problem. We have to choose the storage. So here is 31.9 GB this storage we are going to use. So I'm just click on it. And finally, we have to click on write. And once we click on write, you have to just yes. And I'll just give my password. And now it is writing in the memory card. And once we are done with it, we are going to put the memory card in the Raspberry Pi. And then we have to boot it. OK, now here is the next. There are two things. The one important thing that is uh, there are two ways you can actually uh, connect the Raspberry Pi with your network. So because the home assistant does not have any uh, GUI that you can, so you cannot just plug your HDMI cable and your, with a monitor, you cannot see anything. Okay, so you have to connect your home assistant or your Pi with a network and you are going to access it, uh, the access the home assistant from your browser only. Now, how to connect your home assistant with the network? So simplest way is, take an Ethernet cable from your router and connect it with the Pi, automatically it is going to get the IP and it will be connected. Then you can simply connect with browser. Now let's say you don't have a router or don't have Ethernet cable or you don't want to connect it to your router or maybe through your Ethernet cable. In that case, you can also connect it wirelessly. Okay, so you can do the full setup wirelessly. Now how to do that? So in this video, I'm going to directly connect to it with my router through Ethernet cable, but I also will tell you how you can do it wirelessly okay so do it wirelessly once you write the whole image in your this in the memory card then you again plug your memory card in your computer now in mac uh, it's very hard to get the memory card because it uh, it basically do partition the memory card and then there is a boot folder okay now in mac it doesn't show it and it's very hard to get the boot folder but in windows is very easy you, if you connect the memory card with Windows, you are directly going to get the boot folder in Ubuntu also it's very easy to get the boot folder. So once you get the boot folder, then you have to go inside the boot folder. Okay. And inside the boot folder here, you have to create a folder nip config. Okay. So in capital C O N F I G config, you have to create a folder. You go inside the config folder and you create a directory called network in small letters, N E T W R network you have to create in small letters. Next, inside the network folder, you have to create a file name my network. Okay, so 
exactly this thing you need to write my network no file extension nothing just my network a file you have to create and inside that file you need to write this whole thing okay just this whole thing but few changes you need to make first change is you have to create a uuid now uuid you can simply create by creating clicking on this link so this whole link and the whole thing will be in the description you can just copy it from there once you get the uuid you put your uuid here next you have to put the ssid of your router so ssid of your router or wi-fi means the name of your router in my case let's say here i have what i, I have air fiber origin so similarly you can uh, write whatever your wi-fi ssid name is and next you have to give your wi-fi password so wi-fi password also you can give and next you just save that file and that's it now you take that memory card out of it and you insert that memory card in your raspberry pi and then your raspberry pi will directly connect to the router okay so in our case uh, i hope yeah so it has been written here so continue and here i'm not going to use the uh, wireless thing i'm just going to connect it my router so it will be easy for me so i'll just take the memory card out of it and i'm going to uh, put the memory card in the router and just put the memory card in a pi and we'll connect the pi with the router and we'll come back okay so now i have connected my pi uh, with the router and also powered it now after powering it it will take at least four to five minutes to for the booting so wait for four to five minutes and then you go to your browser and make sure you are connected in the same router okay and then same in the same network and then you can simply write home assistant.local and port number one two two three uh, eight one two three okay uh, i'll also put the link in the description and once you click here you are going to say this that preparing home assistant and this may take 20 minutes or more okay so it will take few minutes and uh, and if you want to see that if your uh, if, let's say this uh, for example url is not working and you want to check if your home assistant has been connected you can use a tool something like thing uh, in this tool you can just go to devices you can search devices and then it is going to show you which devices has been connected so as you can see here i can see that my home assistant has been connected and uh, also it will gonna show me what is the ip address so if that home assistant.local is not open, you can directly copy the IP and you can put the IP with the port number that is also going to work. In most of the cases, this URL is going to work, but in case it's not working, use the IP address. Okay, now it will take around 20 minutes. So I'll come back after 20 minutes. So after a few minutes, as you can see, it's completely ready. And now as you can see, it's showing create my smart home and also restore from backup. So I'm going to just create a new one. So create my new home. I'll do give a name. So I'll just give it name uh, rigid test. Uh, username arijit and i'm going to give it a password and confirm password so create account once we are done creating the account we have to give the address so i'm going to give my address as kolkata so we're done next and now is going to say like if you want to share all these things you can share i'm not going to do it Next, it's going to show you that all the compatible device is going to find. Now, in my case, this network, I don't have any devices. So it's uh, like in this in this network, only this uh, home assistant I have connected. So it's not showing anything. But if you have a lot of devices like Philips lamps and like uh, there are a lot of smart devices available. If you have any of them, smart TV, smart speaker, anything like that, all those things will be showed here. So in my case, it's not there, but in your case, it should be showed here. Okay, now just click on finish. And once you finish, now your home assistant has been installed in your Raspberry Pi and this is the official dashboard. So as you can see, the dashboard is showing my current temperature with humidity, weather based on my current location. Now, if you want to add devices here, what you simply have to do is you just have to go to settings from their devices and services. And here you are going to get all your different devices from smartphone, speaker, everything. And you just have to do click on configure, just submit and your devices will be configured with your home assistant it's that easy okay now what you have to do if you have to add anything here you just click on here here you can see this is uh edit dashboard hide identity area and there you have to go here you can take control so you have to just click on take control and once you do that take control and as you can see here we are so now you can add your own entity so entities are the different functionalities your device is having so you can just click on add a cart and here by entity you can just search for different devices you are having and for example your devices may have different functionalities okay 
So to show all these things, I'm going to switch to my network and I'm going to connect with uh, another Wi-Fi. So in that Wi-Fi, I have a different home assistant already installed and in that home assistant, I have different devices. And this is the one. So I'll just connect with this home assistant. So as you can see, this is my home assistant looks like, as you can see, a lot of devices, a lot of buttons here. Okay. So, and if I just, for example, click here, and if I just click on, uh, let's say, add card, if I just buy entity in here, I'll see like entities of my different devices. For example, I can see my Android TV in this way. So my iPhone is the same network. So it's showing the battery level of my iPhone and all the things, so all other devices, all different entities are going to show. So for example, if I take my RHS iPhone battery level, I click on here, it's showing 40%. So it's saying that my currently my phone has 40% battery. Okay. Now I can just click on here and I can just continue. It show that we have created a session. So like add to dashboard. So I can just click on add to dashboard. And now as you can see that my smartphone, so if I click on done, my iPhone's battery level now is showing on my dashboard because my iPhone is in the same uh, network. Similarly, I can add any number of things. For example, all the devices you are seeing, uh, these devices are basically ESP home devices and uh, all these devices I have add manually. This is a WLT device I'm having. Now you can just go to you can just go to your settings from settings to devices, and here you are going to get all of your new devices, and you can just connect them there. Okay. Few other things I'll show you, very basic things, and we are going to talk more about this in some upcoming videos. So if you just go to settings here, the important thing is devices and services. You are going to get different devices. You can. Uh, you are going to get all the devices here, the helpers you can create, helpers we'll talk about in a separate video. Then you have this automation, using this you can create different automations. So if you want like in 6 p.m. in the evening, I'm going to turn on this light, turn off that thing, turn on this thing. You can do all these things here. Also conditional things you can do, for example, if you have a maybe LDR kind of sensor, whenever that sensor detects something, you want to do that thing, all these things you can do from here. We are going to talk about this in detail in some other video. Then there is this add-on. You can use different add-ons. So for now, for now, I, for now, I'm having this SSH, ESP Home File Editor. You can have a lot of add-ons. And then there is this dash, dashboards. You can create your own dashboard. You can delete dashboards from here. Uh, also, if you want to just uh, restart your system, you can just go to system. You can click here and restart. Also, if you want to connect your system in a different network in Wi-Fi, you can just go to network from your Wi-Fi. You can just search for scan for access points. And from here, you are going to get a list of access points nearby. You can connect to them. For example, as you can see a lot of uh, Wi-Fi, so I can just click on any of them. I have to put my password here, save, and it's going to connect to that network. So you can change your network in this way. You can check your storage from here and all the things. And these are mainly very basic things here. And uh, also, for example, here I have my hacks installed. So hack is home assistant community store from here. You can download a lot of add-ons uh, like you have different themes like mushroom. This is a dashboard theme. Then there is this button card, some mods. Okay. All different things you are having here. Okay. Then there is this, uh, uh, there is this ESP home. So ESP home, if you don't know, you can just use any of your ESP 866, uh, ESP 32 based boards. To, you can control those boards from your home assistant so you can use those boards for any kind of automation and then that automation you can control through your home assistant on this topic also i'll create a separate video so all these devices you are seeing here these are basically my uh, uh esp home based devices so i'll just uh, delete this one delete and as you can see here so basically here these are mainly my uh, all these things are buttons are for my aquarium so i have a lot of aquariums in my home and i can just turn on the light of the tanks i can turn the pump turn on the fans all the things i can control from here okay this is a WLED, so it's led strip i'm having i can turn it on turn it off intensity speed i can control and all the things so i have my smart android tv here i can turn it on turn it off so a lot of things I'm having here. So based on the devices you are using, you can configure them and you can use it here. Also, I have configured my CCTV that you cannot see for now. I've disabled it, but all the things you can add your CCTVs, wireless cameras, everything here. Okay, so it's a very basic video I have made on how you can install the home assistant. And in next videos, I will show you the advanced topics like automation, ESP home and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. And I think that's it for this video.
okay if you have any queries let me know in the comment section i'll try my best to solve those things so guys i hope you have learned something from this video in that case please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so that we can make more videos like this and more home automation and raspberry pi based videos are coming soon so please subscribe the channel and stay tuned and i'll see you in the very next video